Step one is to decide whereabouts on the boat you're going to be able to fit your panels. There are a couple of important considerations here. First of all, you want the maximum efficiency from your panels. Uh, you're going to be paying good money for them and you want to get as much energy out of them as possible. So to do that, they need to be angled towards the sun. Right now the sun is over there. So what you'd want is your panels ideally to be facing in this direction. So that's one consideration, the angle towards the sun. The second consideration is shading. If you have any shading at all on the panel, even just if you have one of the cells covered with shade, then the entire panel will output a lot less energy. You can lose maybe 20% just from one small area of the panel being covered. So this is another important consideration. The third important consideration, in my opinion, is the loss of working deck space. You don't want to be cluttering up the working areas of your boat with solar panels because they, although you can stand on them, they are very slippery and that is not a good thing to have on your boat. When I was fitting the solar panels to this boat, the first place I considered putting them was here, just behind the hatch there. Um, however, as you can see right now, this is an area that receives lots of shade from the boom, so that's really not a good place to put them. This is only a nine metre long boat, so there aren't many options in terms of where you can fit panels. What I ended up doing was constructing a set of supports at the back of the boat and I was able to place two 100 watt panels on top of these supports. The advantages of putting them here are A, there is hardly ever any shade at this part of the boat. It's well behind the boom and the mainsail and it's a very good place to, uh, to not have shading. I also wanted the angle of the panels towards the sun to be adjustable and placing them here at the back of the boat gives me lots of scope to do that. Step two is to buy the largest panels available to you based on your budget and the space available. Step three is to buy a solar charge controller. These regulate the charge to the batteries and are very important. There are two main types. The one that I'm showing you here is the more basic type. They're very cheap to buy, but um, they get rid of excess voltage by creating heat. So they're much less efficient than the second type. The second type is an MPPT charge controller, maximum power point tracking. These can give you up to 40% more charge from the same panels. So while you're going to the trouble of fitting solar panels to your boat, you might as well get the most out of them and get a decent controller too. Step four is to fit the solar panels. Every boat is different, so I can't tell you how to do it, but I can show you how I fitted these panels to this boat and you can perhaps get some ideas from that. I've seen examples of solar panels being fitted onto a roll bar on the back of the boat. And I've also seen panels mounted on top of a pole so that they can be turned towards the sun. I've never seen a system like this, which is basically a combination of those two ideas in the same system. The panels are attached to the stainless steel supports by what is effectively a universal joint. This allows them to be rotated 360 degrees and angled towards the sun at whatever position it may be in at the time. They are then quickly and easily fixed into position by the four Dyneema ropes and two Jubilee clips. So let's say the sun is coming from that direction and we want to increase the output from our panels. You simply slacken the two Jubilee clips and then you can rotate the panel towards the desired position then reposition the Dyneema, tighten the lower Jubilee clip first and then finalise the tension with the upper Jubilee clip. That's it, done. And these panels have been out in over 50 knot winds and they're very stable. I also use quick disconnect electrical connectors and a single Jubilee clip at the top of the pole. So if I do want to remove the panels, that only takes a couple of minutes. I'll give you a quick overview here. Each panel is bolted to a H-frame made from stainless steel tubing and T-pieces. And then we have a universal joint held on with a Jubilee clip. That drops down. We have a perpendicular bar running across with two 30 degree T pieces and that just stiffens the whole structure and then we have two bars running downwards one that just rests on an existing part of the boat which is actually a breather for the fuel system and then the other bar runs down 
supported by this eye bolt it then runs down forward to give a stronger structure and that is simply drilled and bolted into the, uh, the side of the boat. I added a stainless steel cable from the turnbuckle here which runs up across a spreader and up and that again just adds more strength to the structure. You can make your own supports like this really easily and you've probably got nearly all the tools that you need already. You need a drill, some decent drill bits, some allen keys and the only tool that you might not have is a pipe cutter. This is a pipe cutter, they're very cheap to pick up and they're really simple to use. This is the kind of stainless steel tubing that I used to make the supports and as you can see it's quite thick, it's about one and a half millimetres thick. Now these pipe cutters, rather than using a grinder and annoying all your neighbours, you can get one of these pipe cutters and you simply apply a little bit of pressure and then you rotate the tubing. A bit more pressure, rotate, pressure, rotate. So it hardly makes any noise, you're not going to get on anybody's nerves. There you go, done. You can then deburr the tube that you've cut using this part of the tool. Then you're ready for the T-pieces, you just slide them in position, you get the positions for the holes for the grub screws and then you just drill a small pilot hole for each hole and then afterwards the grub screw goes in there, you screw it into the pipe and that gives it a really good firm grip. Using this technique you can get some really strong supports. Step five is to run the cables and then make the electrical connections. On this design I left plenty of slack at the top of the panels for rotation and then I drilled the tubular stainless and used it as a conduit to run the cables down and then they exit the bottom here and then come up through into the inside of the boat. These are then connected to the MPPT charge controller and on this system we also have an external display which shows the state of charge of the batteries and it also shows the voltage at the panels and the charging that's taking place so right now the batteries are 100 percent full so at the moment the batteries are getting 13.6 volts and one amp which is a very small amount that's because the batteries are fully charged this upgrade makes a massive difference to your boat it doesn't cost that much money and it means you can be really independent. My wife and I went on our honeymoon on this boat and despite it being only nine meters long, we spent 23 nights at anchor and we didn't have to connect once to shore power and we only nipped into port for one hour just to refill our, our water tanks, but we were completely independent and we had the fridge running, we had all our lights, the anchor lights and the navigation lights and we also used the inverter for things like charging our laptop. So we had lots of power and all from these two solar panels. Thanks for watching guys. If you want to see more videos then subscribe and don't forget, love life.